is still a requirement today. People find a reason why it's okay to do one thing, but not the other. But whatever he required of us, then he requires now. Thank God for the New Testament and the new covenant that he brought to the church. Because he was that only last sacrifice that had to shed blood for the remissions of our sins. Lord, thank God for that. Now here God himself prepared a body and placed his spirit in it and called him Jesus, which was his son. And came and bled and died on a cross for you and for I. So that we may have the right to eternal life. How bad do you want it? That's a good question. How bad do you want eternal life? Do you want it bad enough to separate yourself from the nonsense on TV? Do you want it bad enough to put your family to the side and stand for God regardless of what people say or think of you? Do you want it bad enough? You want it bad enough not to care what people think of you when you up in the middle of the street lifting your hand saying thank you God because he made a way. How bad do you want it? Takes me back to where we were going to talk about today. We're talking about asking God to take us back to the old path. See, see this new stuff ain't working. Remember in the church, now let us all Go back to the old, go back to the old landmark where the preachers used to preach. When I say preach, I'm talking preaching what God told them to preach. See, so much hypocritical preaching and pastoring in these ministries on today, people are falling for anything. God didn't tell you if you give money, you'll be blessed. He told you to give because he gave. He don't put dollar signs on your blessings. Oh, but people fall for it. But deception has been going on since day one. And it started with the serpent in the garden, which was being used by the devil. So you got to be careful who and what you listen to. Jeremiah 6, verse 16 says, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the way and see and ask for what? The old path. Stand in the way and see and ask for what? The old path. Why do we want to ask for this old path? Because it is good. <laughs> Ain't that what it says? Where it's good. Where it's a good way. And walk therein. See, God want to take us back to where we were on fire for him. The old, old, old path. Get, get all this false doctrine out of the church. And stand like Stephen did. And got stoned for preaching what the old path taught. Hmm? It says, and walk therein, and ye shall do what? Find rest for your soul. But they say, we will not walk there in. That's what we find in today. We don't want to do the old thing because the new thing looks better. It feels better. It seems better. It attracts more and more people. If you have read your Bible, we know that the Old Testament is full of lessons for Christians. I'll get what I said. It's full of lessons for who? Not for everybody, but for Christians. Because it was written for our, our learning. How, how do we know that it was written for our learning? Because that was also written. In Romans 15 and 4, it says, For whosoever or whatsoever 
things were written before time, before time which was before time is what? Were written for our learning. For whose learning? Our. Whose learning? Us. The whole world? Our learning. Only those that are going to abide in Jesus Christ. For our learning that what? We through patience and uh -huh. comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We through comfort of the scriptures might have hope. God allowed things to be written for us to hold on to his unchanging hand until he returns to get his church. It was written for our, our learning. Huh? It was also written for our admiration. According to 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples. Mm -hmm. And they were written for what? For our omission. For, for our, our, our admonishing? Upon, Upon what? Whom the ends of the world are come. Admonition. Upon what? Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Is the end of the world coming upon us? Yes, it is. is it coming upon us? Yes, Who was this written for then? For those that see this, understand this, can receive this, can accept this. And no matter what somebody try to break down to you, if it's opposite of this true gospel, you need to turn your back to it. Because we found similar messages in, in, in the days of, of Jeremiah. Because there, there was a time when religion was going through social turmoil. Look at religion today. Same old thing, but a different time. Huh? The nation of Israel was being... Pulled in many, 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 many directions. Don't that seem familiar on today? Where Christianity is being pulled in many directions. When someone has been bold enough to create a rainbow Bible. And call it holy. A rainbow Bible and call it holy. Where you will stand in the house of God and marry a man to a man or a woman to a woman and sanction it holy. Come on. Where are we? And then you put everything before God. And we are in trouble. Wake up, people. We are being pulled too many ways. But there is only one way to righteousness. And that is only through Jesus Christ. We see that the Lord wants to offer rest for our souls. Right here in, in Jeremiah 6 and 16. He wants to give us rest for, for, for our souls. So... In order to, to look at this in a different way, we would imagine we are, are traveling. We are en route to somewhere where we're going to have to pull over sometimes and find what? Find rest. But as we travel, guess what? Sometimes, and some people just really lose their way. But guess what? The Lord calls them. He calls them and asks them to return back to the old path. Get back to the old way. Where, where you wasn't too cute to get on your knees and, and cry out to me when the littlest thing was going on in your life. Now we only want to pray when something big going on. Oh, I ain't got my red ball. I need your help. Oh, but... I promise you, if you help me, God, I'll be at church every time it opens. And God comes 
Astro. And next week, where are you? The week after that, where are you? No, you ain't crying because you're talking about how good God was, but you ain't got time to give God praise. You ain't got God, you ain't got God six to come back in front of God and say thank you. Just like the ten. One kept on and came back and said, you know what? God, thank you. Thank you, Lord God Jesus. You healed me. You cleansed me. The other nine I'm not worried about. But me myself had to come back and say thank you. See, we gotta get back to the old, the old, the old, the old way. Here we see it in Jeremiah once again, 6 and 16. It says what? Stand in the way and see. Now we gotta know it's not just one path. Because there's many directions that one may follow. That's why God here is gave Jeremiah to tell him, come back to the old path. Think about it. There's more than one way to do church today. There's more than one way. People watch Mr. Osteen make you laugh and giggle. Never tell you to repent. Never tell you sinners are going to hell. Never tell you that your life and your soul is in hell fire if you do not come out of what you're living in. He just makes you laugh and giggle. It's not my job to tell them that. I don't want to hurt their feelings. Well, I'll tell you like my daddy used to tell me, a feeling was made to be hurt. <laughs> it wouldn't hurt if it wasn't made to hurt. So I'm not concerned about your feelings. I have to tell you the truth. Ask, ask for the old path. And, and how many of y'all know the old way is often the best way? Such as certain here in this case, the old way is the, the best way. Huh? We have steered so far off. God is telling us to come back. Come back. Come back to the old path. Come back to your old roots. Come back where I first changed you and really, really changed you. Make people tarry. My sister asked me about tarry and that's basically waiting on God. There's no such thing of an instant salvation if you don't know how to repent. Shame on you all. You say you're saved and can't tell nobody else how to be saved. You ain't saved. Betty Crocker did not put her, what's the thing called? Recipe on a box and didn't know how to make a cake. It's obvious she knew you need a little baking soda, a little flour, a little vanilla abstract, a little egg, nut and egg to bake a cake. So if you ever stopped her on the street, uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Betty, can you tell me how to bake a cake? She would know how to tell you. <laughs> but then you ask the saint, lead me to Christ, you can't tell me. That's because you ain't been baked yet. You ain't even been put together yet. I ain't talking about black as you are. That ain't what I'm talking about, being black baked. You don't be looking at your skin then. I'm talking about your heart. I'm talking about have God got activated in your spirit yet? Because see, 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 there's things a man can't tell you that a woman can about her body. And vice versa. You tell a woman you know how she feels during that time of the month, you can't tell her that. You're a man. You've never experienced it. Why can't we tell them? Because we never experienced it. So why can't we lead people to Christ? Because we never. Hmm, never experienced it. And he said this old way is a the good way. 
This, this is the good way. The good way. Good way. And, and not all paths lead to, to goodness. Not all paths lead to the good way. Not all paths lead to Jesus. I don't care what Oprah done told y'all there's many paths to God. No, it's not. It's only one. And his name is Jesus Christ. If you don't understand that, it's Yahshua. It's Yahweh. The only way to Yahweh is through Yahshua. In this case, the old path leads us back to Moses' law. What did the Bible tell us about law? Law was wrote for the lawless. Huh? Because the ones that are saved are going to obey the law. So it's not really written for those that obey the law. It's for those that don't obey the law. Jer Jeremiah 7 verses 20 through to 24. Finally, get it. For I speak to your fathers. For I spake not unto your fathers, uh -huh. nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Concerning what? Concerning burnt offerings uh -huh. and sacrifices. Uh -huh. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. Hold on. So he didn't go to them about burnt offerings and sacrifices. What he came to them about is what? Obeying his voice. His voice. Obeying what he told you to do. Obeying his laws. Have God changed? No. He says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I'm a non-changing God. But they reckon not nor incline their ears. In other words, they ain't listening. But walking in the console. And in their imagination of their evil hearts. And went backwards and not forward. See, that's what's wrong with y'all. Y'all get in church and you start moving forward. And then something happens and you go backwards instead of forward. If you got breath in your body, you should always put God first. And when you don't, you're going backwards instead of forward. Here is a man, God, created a body to house himself in, which became the son because God couldn't bleed. Y'all better get this spirit don't bleed, do it? Flesh only bleeds. That's why Jesus had to walk amongst us. How do we know that? The scripture says so. He dwelt amongst us. So here's a woman walking around and ends up pregnant. And have not been touched by a man. Because God had to create a body. As the final sacrifice. That hung on a cross. And bled and died. So we can go forward. And not backwards. Why is the church so far backwards? Why are we so backwards? I like that. We are still ungrateful. Thank you. We are so ungrateful we can't show up to church. We are so ungrateful that we can't even do what we promised. All that he did took 39 lashes. Now legally if they had hit you one more time, meaning 40, you would have died. But God took it all for what? For us. While they spit on him. Poured hair out his beard. He took it all for us. They spit. Look, look. Y'all don't want to be spit on. But he took it. As he bared the cross. He had me and you in mind. I'm going to the cross for them. Because if I don't, they'll be lost. They'll be backwards instead of forward. Why are we so far back now? Have we forgotten what Jesus did? The purpose he died? He didn't die for no car. He didn't die for no money. He didn't die for no house. He did not die for us to be happy. 
He died for us to be saved. I hear Jesus is making a similar plea today. To strive on the right path. The right path. The old path. Get back in line with me. Wake up Christians. Get back. Stop listening to the people and study yourself. Hear your pastor because how can they preach? Unless they've been sent. But how can they hear without the preacher? Everybody preaching ain't pre no preacher. They just know how to run their mouth. Make you feel good. Tell you God got a hug waiting on you. Because they know you single. They see you sitting there looking at every other married couple. You don't even see that in church hardly no more anyway. But the devil will whisper in their ear. And call you up, tell you, this is what I want you to do for God to bless you. The Bible done already told me what to do for me to be blessed. Obey him. Obey God. But the same plea in Jeremiah was given by Jesus today. And we'll find this here in Luke 13, 24. And it says, Jesus said unto them, what? Strive to, to enter, enter the what? In at the straight gate. At the what gate? At the straight gate. The straight gate? So straight means there's no curves. Stop looking at her. She ain't got curves. She should be straight. Huh? For many. For many. I say unto you. Uh-huh. Will seek to enter in. And but will not be, not able. be able. Many's going to try to get in and will not get in. Why? Because they didn't make Jesus first. They did not put God first. They did not obey God's laws. They did not obey God's rules. I don't care if it's the old or the new testament. If God said it. We ought to abide in it. Now of course we're not going to be burning no animals. Saying God forgive me because I sin. Because we know better. You know a liar's going to go to hell. Or do you? Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't know if you're laying down with a person you're not married to. I don't care what the circumstances are. If you are not married, you are a fornicator and an adulterer to God if you claim that you're saved. Because when you do wrong, you're serving to devil. The Bible says if you if you bow down, yield to sin, you become a slave to the sin. So that means God has no rights on you. My wife or I mean to me, you my husband. She know her right. I tell you, my wife. Your mother little scallywags don't listen to them. They wish they had a husband like me. That's why they hollering and crying, but I don't know how you put up with it. Because she loved me and we love God. I love her. Because we, we, we are told by once again God to enter the straight gate. Why? Because it's narrow. That gate is narrow and it's not easy to enter. If something is not easy, why do we deal with it any kind of way? If you know you are about to take a test and you know that it's not going to be easy, you will study more than you would normally study for an easy test. You, you, you will take more time to get to familiar with some of the questions that may be asked before you take this test. Because we got to know that Jesus let us know that there is only one way to the Father. One way. How do we know that? According to John 14 and 6. says Jesus said I am the way. The truth and the light. No man comes to the father. But by me. Nobody. No body. I don't care how rich you are. You cannot go to God. Unless you go through Jesus. How do you go through Jesus? 
First of all, you better recognize what he did. He died for your sins. That's why you got to accept that. Announce that. Speak that. You believe in your heart and say with your mouth. See, a lot of us say stuff with our mouth but don't believe it in our heart. Like, I'm saved. But you ain't believing that in your heart. That Jesus died and he rose on the third day. Acts 4, verse 12. Neither there is salvation in any other. Nobody. Nobody. Salvation in nobody else. For there is none other name under heaven given unto man whereby we might be saved. There's no way but Jesus' way. Now we think God is going to accept our excuses. Well, anything God will do for us, he's done before, right? So can I take you back to the beginning? When Adam and Eve realized they were, were naked. And Adam said, is this woman you, you, you gave me? That was his excuse for falling into sin. Did God excuse that? Of course he didn't. So what makes you think God's going to excuse you? If he told you not to do it, he meant not to do it. Under no circumstances. Now Eve could have ate of the fruit and left him alone. God had to talk with him. But you be it the man, the head, the, 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 the one that I gave dominion to, you should have been making sure that woman was right. What's wrong with these lousy men today? Your wife is the one ruling the house. God did not call it that way. She's there to be a help me. And if she's a help me, you need to be with her. Teaching her. Guiding her. Covering her. Leading her. Reading to her. Speaking into her. Loving her. Protecting her. Like God has commanded you to do. But you sorry men can't do that today. Because you're still on mama. Mama has ruined you. You left mama to get another mama. You just do something with this mama that you didn't do with your own. You came out of your mama but going in the other one. Y'all catch that next week. Time to wake up. Put your boots on. Strap them up. We got to get back to the old way. Because he said, for, 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 for broad is, is the way. And, and many there what? Many there go. Many going to go to the broad way. They going to go to the church. It's fun. We got the choir. We dance. We got the deacon, deacon nest. Coming in like, oh, oh, oh. You think God is interested in some foolishness like that? Here you are in church, in church, praising a God that you say you love and can't love your neighbor. Come on in, mother. How you doing? God bless you. You, you can't love your neighbor. And the first thing God said, if you can't love, then what, what, what makes you think you're going to see the kingdom of heaven and remain there with God that is love? Ah, how can you explain it to me, please? Matthew 7 and 13 says, Enter ye in the straight gate, because wide and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there find it. Many there go that way. People think they're going to heaven and on their way to hell with churches packed out today. Because you fail to obey God. You fail to listen to God. You felt to do what God told you to do. Not what man says. You ought to be like those disciples. Stephen. Now, I would do what God told me to do. Instead of man. I'd rather obey God. 
than to obey man. Somebody needs to make a decision to obey God than to obey man. Once again, you need to do what? Obey God than to obey man. Obey man. In their straight gate. The straight gate. Because broad is the way to lead to destruction. And the broad way is a way that many are following. Many are on their way to destruction right now. Somebody just died a second ago. On their way to destruction. Somebody just died again. A second ago on their way to destruction. Somebody in this world and died again right now. On their way to destruction. Two or three people may have just died just now. And on their way to destruction because broad is the way. You want to be with the crowd. Let me tell you something about a crowd. When something happens, a crowd will trample over you. Amen. To save themselves. Amen. Hallelujah. But when you on the narrow way, you got time to move and run and make a decision to move out the way if you got to move out the way. But Jesus still offered us a good way. His people a good way. How many of y'all want the way that Jesus offered us? Amen. He offered us a good way so we can have rest for our souls. What kind of rest for our souls is he talking about? Eternity rest. Because you're going to be tormented if you don't be in eternal rest. Matthew 11, 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you, I will give you rest. Why do a person need rest? That's because they tire from their labor. They've been working. Y'all upset me here. I need rest. You do what you want to do. I need rest. But God said he'll give me rest. I'll have a peaceful rest. He told me to work while it's day. Because when night comes, what? Nobody. No man can work. So get it all done right now. So you can rest later. So, so, so in this case, it leads us back to the where Jesus here in Matthew 29. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For what? For I am meek and lowly in heart. Huh? And you shall find rest until your souls. Take my yoke. Anybody understand yoke? Get tangled up in Jesus. Get locked up in Jesus. Can you separate the yellow from the clear in an egg? Can you? Can you completely separate the yellow from the clear? No, you can't. Because it's yoked in there. It's going to always be some clear in the yellow. Because it's yoked in there. That's how we got to be in Jesus. That's why I say the old way is related today as Jesus has told us we need to stand. These are the standards of Jesus. Huh? What happened to Israel? Appearance to be in this case. Many of us are in today. What happened to them? Because many, many of us are like this today. Like the children of Israel. They stumbled. They stumbled. They fell backwards. They went back. Now here, 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 you, you, you have been slaves. Come on, people. You've been slaves. And God tell Moses, tell the Pharaoh, let, 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 let my, my people go. It took a little time, but you got out. But now here you are standing in front of the Red Sea with nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. You can't walk on water, can you? There wasn't no boats to take them over, was it? They sure not going to swim that far, right? But then lo and behold, God instructs the man of God to hold up your staff. And parted the water. And everybody walked through. Shouldn't that 
been all it took for them to stay in Christ and not fall. Even though they look back and seen the army. Because Pharaoh would have woke up now like, wait, wait. If I let them go, who's going to build all my, my stuff? And guess what? The pastors had the same attitude Pharaoh had. If I start preaching the truth, who's going to buy my jets? Who's going to pay for my million dollar house? Who, 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 who's going to pay the mortgage on the church? So I got to keep giving them sugar and candy instead of meat and vegetables. The Pharaoh woke up and said, go, go get them. Bring them back. You got old people, young people, babies, kids, donkeys, cows, whatever. And he looked back in the Ocean started to do what? Fold over and drown them all. Drown at the army. God protected them. He freed them. Released them. He kept them. Even when it seemed like all hope was gone, God made a way. And this is the same God we serve. Huh? They are wandering around in the wilderness for what, 40 years? God said, I'll, I'll rain manna from heaven for you to eat. Don't worry about nothing. And you still complain. You still complain. Some were saying it was better because we had food to eat when we was being beat. <laughs> Master took care of us. Even though he showed no love. But here's a loving God that parted the sea for you. So you didn't have to get beat no more. Jeremiah 18 ver verse 15. Tells you why. Because my people have forgotten me. They are what? Forgotten me. Did what? Forgotten me. No, they love me. Forgotten me. They want me. Forgotten. They want to be with me. Forgotten. They love me. Forgotten. My people have what? Forgotten, forgotten me. me. They have burned incense to vanity. Oh. They have put me to the side and started worshiping other God. gods. And they have caused them to stumble. The other gods caused fall back from me in their ways ah so but when they used to get up and pray they don't pray no more because their other gods have caused them to stumble when they put their families in front of them when they need to be at worship it causes you to stumble nah. oh can i open all the way up Ah, uh, when you put whatever in front of God, you have made it a God and it will cause you to stumble. You are farther back than you were before you fell back. No, let's, let's be real. Wake up, people. Understand the tactics of the devil. What he say is okay ain't okay. You get a job. You're on probation. So you're real careful. So I got probation from here to there. So I'm real careful. Showing up on time. Making sure my stuff is right. But, 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 oh, well, well I'm off probation now. I can come to work late. Do well, because they can't fire me. Call off when I need to be at work. They can't do nothing to me. But guess what you are doing? You are building a case up, pushing your name farther back. Because if there is a promotion and you need more money, you will not be chosen. Cause yourself to stumble. And it says, in their way from their what? The ancient path. From their ancient path. What is ancient? Old? Old. Their old path, their old way. The old way I told people to do this. To walk in the way, what? To walk in the paths in a way not cast up. 
She what God has told us to do. That's why we got to ask God for the old path. path. We got to get back to the old path. Mm -hmm. Where you bring your Bible to church, open your Bible, read your Bible, your paper Bible, not your computer Bible. Ah, because the Bible, the book itself, the words can't change. Oh, but your 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 iPhone can update right now and change everything in your Bible. So God has revealed Himself for a long time. He established a highway for us to follow. He's established a highway, a direction, a path for his children to do what? To follow. But instead, many has turned to the side and turned away. Yes, you may get up and come to church, but you're still not on the path. Don't you know God's people face similar danger today Jesus established once again the highway for us to follow didn't he he gave us this in his words and his commandments he told us to learn of him didn't he give me Matthews 11 29 because his word his doctrine his, 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 his commandments it says, take up my yoke once again and do what? And learn of me. Do what? And learn of learn me. Learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. He also communicated this through his, his, his apostles. According to Matthew 28 and uh, 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 20. Told them to teach them how to observe all things. Not some things, but all things. Ain't it? All things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. Even until the end of the world. Amen. He communicated the same thing. Through his apostles. Also was aided by the Holy Spirit. Here in John 16. 12 through 13. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Why not? How bet when he, the spirit of truth is come, mm -hmm. he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into what? He will guide you into all truth. Uh -huh. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear that he shall speak. And he will show you things to come. So the Holy Spirit is here to aid us, direct us, guide us. See, this goes back to your preacher and your pastor. The sermon shouldn't be about him. It should be about Jesus. Once again, we go through similar things today. Because see, the early disciples were, were careful to follow God or obey God. Huh? Because Acts 2.42 says if, if they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, wait a minute, wait a minute, and they continuously stayed steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, Fellowship is being together. And in the breaking of bread and, and in prayer. They were careful. Made sure they showed up for fellowship. Made sure they obeyed the words that God gave the apostles to give the people. Ah. Uh. Are you careful today? Are you more concerned about everything else? Because see, a lot of people are allowing the cares of this world to overtake them. When God is not concerned with this world because this world will burn. The Bible says it's going to burn with what? Fire and brimstone. 
and everything in it will be destroyed. That's why he told us to build our house on solid rock. And the rock is Jesus Christ. Where the moths, the storm, the rain, the water, nothing can destroy it. When you are built on solid foundation. Huh? Second Thessalonians 5 and 15. The Christians were commanded to do this as well. It says, therefore, brethren, do what? Stand fast. Do what? Stand fast. And what? And hold the tradition. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. And do what? Hold the tradition. So why is church changing so much? He says, stand, stand fast and hold, hold the traditions which you have been taught. Ah, oh, hold on to them. Don't do away with baptism. Don't do away with communion. Don't do away with being hands laid on. Don't do away with tongues. Don't do away with it. Hold on to it. Oh, but the church too cool for that. We ain't doing that now. Now we're going to praise party. Huh? We're going to come to church and turn it up. Hold on to it. Chapter 3 and 6 says what? Now we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you what? Withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. You see why we stand alone a little bit now? Ain't that what that say? Or did I read that right? There, there, therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which I have been taught. Chapter 3, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. Let's make sure I'm reading right, because maybe I ain't reading right. That's why you got to disconnect from folks that say they saved and they ain't living like it. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your brother, your sister. Don't fall into it. Now we command you, brethren. Second Thessalonians. Chapter three. Chapter three verse. verse six. Make sure I'm reading right. Not a novice. Not a novice. Wrong thing. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, you're right, Pastor. That's oh. first Timothy. Okay, three. help me out now. Cause... You're right, Pastor. Second Timothy. No, Thessalonians. Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians 3 and 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that ye do what? Withdraw yourselves from every brethren that walketh disorderly. So look, look, every ministry that ain't doing right, disconnect yourself from. It says, and, and not after the traditions, which. So whatever God told you to do when y'all done broke away with it, you don't need to be in those churches. Go back to the old. I don't know if, if some of y'all are young in here, like, like you over here on the drums is a little young, but I, I recall when, when it took uh, five to six dollars to fill up a car like the one you drive in. And, and, and if you had an accident, it didn't do much damage because the cars were stronger and heavier. You can hit a car doing 20 and just probably barely scratch it. But now things have changed to do mass production. They're using cheaper material. Uh, Brother Jerry, I don't know if you remember, but 
when the car was painted, the paint job would last for 20 years or the life of the car. But then California takes the lead out of paint. And now you see all the cars peeling after two to three years. Go back to the old. They claim that, that the, the environment is being harmed. Huh? You guys are allowing the smoking. You guys are allowing all this other stuff. But we got to get back to the old. The food is, 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 is killing us. You, you know, I remember we used to go back in the backyard and see collard greens growing. Tomatoes and orange trees and lemon trees all in our yards. That person don't know what a tree look like. They don't come out and sit up under them. Go back to the old. Ah, I remember when I don't care who you were. If an adult was in your presence, it was yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yes, sir, no, sir. Go back to the old. You open a door for somebody, they say thank you. Now they look at you like you supposed to open it. Huh? Go back to the old. Ah, uh, where the teachers were mature and had an education to educate the young ones. Not coming to, to work looking like the kids. You walk in the classroom and can't tell the teachers from the students. Mm. You, you, you remember jobs wouldn't hire you without tattoos, with tattoos on? You remember that? You could not have any shown tattoos, right? But now you can have tattoos all over your face. Welcome to Burger King. Have it your way. You look nasty. I don't think I want it that way. Come on in, brother. You're welcome. I don't think I want it that way, but we got to get back to the old, old, the old way. Where people were respectful to one another. Where people didn't mind helping one another. You, you sing someone down, you pull your hand out to do what? Lift them up. Come on. Get back to the old. This is what God is trying to tell us. Get back to the old traditions of church. Leave this new stuff alone. See, people want the new and not the old. Oh, but, but if you knew anything like me, just like the cars today, right? Those same cars that they pay $1,500 for are worth 100000 right now if they're in top shape. The original, exactly. They're worth it. Get back to the old. Where, where, where the parents would sit down with the children and teach them our father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. We pray before we go to bed. Get back to the old. Mm, you bring, bring, you bring, you bring dinner into the house and everybody go their own ways. Get back to the table. Learn what your kids are doing. Ain't no way in the world my child's going to be building no bomb in my house and I not know. I'm going in your room. You in my house. My daddy used to tell me, boy, if you want your own house, if you want to do what you want to do, you need your own. Get back to the old. Y'all see my two boxes. My dad, that's my daddy's fault. Because he told me every man need his own tools. Don't you go borrow another man's tools. Get back to the old. But no, y'all want it easy. Everybody want it easy. Nobody wants to work for anything no more. You know, the government got you so lazy now, won't even go get a job. I remember a man was built like this. He could have had a job making whatever. If minimum wage was three seventy five when we was younger. Three seventy five. He could have had a job making fifteen dollars. If he lost that job, he'll go get two jobs to make up what he was doing to take care of his family. Now you're sitting home waiting on the women. Get back to the old. Because here it tells us that many people are led away. From the path that God has written out for us. We have been led astray. 
How are you led astray? That's because you are in these churches where the pastors are afraid to tell you that you are hell bound if you do not repent. Well, I don't want to tell them that because they won't come back. Well, they heard the truth at least one time. Because the blood is not going to be on my hand. Matthews 15 and 9, and this is what we, 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 we see, but, but in vain they, they, they worship me. In what? In vain they worship me. Teaching for doctrines that commands of man. See, this is the problem we have now. In vain, people are in church in vain. Worshiping God because they're obeying man and not God. Why do you think we made this switch? That was man's rule to do what we were doing. When God wakes you up, he'll walk you and direct you in the way you need to go. People are following the philosophy of, of man. But the Bible tells us in, in Colossians uh, 2 and 8. Beware, lest any man what? Spoil you through philosophy and, and what? vain deceit. Wait, 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 wait. See, this is where this is where y'all get in trouble. Y'all letting these men come up here with these words and, and their philosophy instead of this word. Deceive you. And it says in, in vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. So we don't what's pleasing the world and what's instead of what's pleasing God. God said he wants you to be holy. Why the other people that's supposed to be holy saying you try you trying to be holier than thou? Well, why aren't you? That's what God told you to be. He said, Be ye holy for what? I am holy. God is a holy God, which what? And looking for what? Holiness. He expects what? Holiness. He desires what? Holiness. He deserves nothing less than holiness. So why not be holy? See, churches are packaging up stuff new and improved on doctrines, but there's no such thing as new and improved doctrines. I get sick of hearing people say God's doing a new thing. God ain't doing nothing new. Everything he's done has been done before. He says, I'm God and I change. Change not. I change not. So how is he doing a new thing and he don't change? It just sounds good, right? See, you see, they, back in the day, they set up signposts. And, and they made landmarks. We need to be that signpost. That landmark of righteousness. Huh? See, e e even this was a solution for Israel. They set up a road. Marked which they would, would, would be directed and follow. So they can come back to the right way. Here is Jeremiah 31, verse 21. Set thee up what? What? Set thee up way marks. Make thee what? High heaps. Come on, that's right. Set thine hardware. Toward the highway. Towards the highway. Even the way which thy win it. Turn again. O version of Israel. Turn again. O version of Israel. And turn again to these thy cities. In other words, come back. Get back where you came from. The church is out in the ocean. Ain't willing to help nobody but help themselves. You sanctified and saved and won't even pray for your neighbor. Come on, come on, let's get back. Get back, get back. 
There were also sign posts and landmarks in the law of Moses to which was not added or are taken away. Huh? Deuteronomy 4 verses 1 and 2. Now therefore hearken O Israel unto the statutes uh -huh. and unto the judgments which I teach you for, for to do them that ye may live. Uh huh. And go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Uh huh. You shall not add unto the word. Ye shall not what? Add unto the word. So why do we have a new gospel? Why do we have all these new Bibles? Uh, why why is man comfortable putting his name on a holy Bible? Uh it says, "Do not add to the word which I command you. Neither shall you demolish." Off from it. Don't get away from it. Don't back off from it. Stay in it. Huh? That ye may keep my what? My commandments. Of the Lord. Your God. Which I commanded you. God told us to keep his commandments. So when did the fourth commandment go null and void? He said keep his commandments. He said if you love me you would do what? Keep and obey my my commandments. Who gave the commandments? God gave the commandments. God wrote the commandments and gave them to Moses. God wrote those, right? Right, right? So keep my commandments. Mm hmm. See, see, we got other type of teachers in this generation telling you to obey them and not God prophesy to you and tell you God is going to do this but I need this from you Mike sent me something yesterday that was so disgust I don't believe people are falling for this stuff in church well let me rephrase it they ain't even in church they in a den of witches a bunch of witchcraft talking about God this God that yes God which is the devil that you serve. Because if, if Jesus didn't, 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 didn't put a dollar sign when he went to the cross, why should we? He, he said, no man taketh my life, but I freely give it up. I freely. God gave his life freely for us. He freely gave his life for us. And we ought to give his word freely. Here, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 4 and 9. Only take heed to thyself and keep your, thy souls what? Diligently. Keep thy souls what? Lest I forget the things which thine eyes have seen. And lest I depart from thine heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy son and thy son's son. Keep teaching his word. Stay in what God gave you and don't detour from it. Ah, stay in it. Somebody say stay in it. Some of y'all need to get in it. You can't stay in something you ain't got in. Stay in this original word. Get back to the old, the old way. The old path. See, this is the solution for us today. We, we got to set up road marks to lead us the right way. Got to set them up, y'all. For, 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 for most of us, we, we need some signposts and landmarks. People need to find us being those landmarks and, and those, those signposts. Uh, on my wife's job, some of them people will come to her because they know they see something different in her versus a lot of the people there. I'm not saying she's better. But when your signpost is on, people can see the light of Jesus Christ in you. It's amazing how people know who to call when they need prayer. They won't call them for nothing else. But that's fine too. Because the signpost is flickering. The light is on. Bible says let your light do what? Shine. 
let it shine. Because see, the apostles' doctrine was received as God's word. It was received as God's word. Y'all believe that? The doctrine of the apostles was received as the word of God. I don't know what's being preached today. Acts 2 and 40, 42. And they continue steadfast in the uh, apostles' doctrine, doing what once again? Fellowshipping in breaking bread and in their prayers. Fellowshipping means you come together for the prayers and the fellowship to be together in one place. But oh no, y'all listen to the man. He told y'all to stop doing that. So you obeyed him instead of obeying God. You see right here, he said, do what? Continue in it. That means don't stop. Continue means to continue. Keep moving, right? Huh? Yeah, keep giving it to them. Keep coming together. Stay plugged in. Stay in tune. Because as the days are coming to an end, we're going to need encouragement from one another. 1 Corinthians 14 and 37. If any man think of himself to be a prophet or spiritual let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Now get this. Have y'all heard today he's a spiritual person? It's not holy no more. It's just spiritual. The devil is spiritual. Come on, that's right. The devil's spiritual. Oh, he's a very spiritual man. The devil is a spirit. We are made spirit. I'm telling you, a spirit. He's very spiritual, but is he a disciple of Christ Jesus? Is he a follower of this word? Is he devoted to live for Christ? So if any man think himself to be a prophet or a spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I wrote unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So you need to acknowledge, thy shall not. Exactly. Still valid. Hmm? First Corinthians or First Thessalonians 2 13 says for this cause also thank we, we God, God without what ceasing without season because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us uh -huh. you received it not as the word of men uh -huh. but as it is in truth the word of God which effectively worketh also in you that believe that only those that believe it worketh in those that only believe. This don't work in those that don't believe. Now, I, I just heard something that just gave me something right here. But but as the truth of God and not and, and the word of God. So not the word of men, but the word of God. This is what concerns me with uh, people. But I know you're unbelievers when you complain about the way the word is delivered. The word is still the word. It's still the truth of God. The thing is, people don't want the truth of God. They just want a word. They want to feel good. I want to leave church and say we had church. Well, what did the pastor preach about? Well, mm -hmm. You're talking about kids? <laughs> I don't know. But it was good. We had some good. We were jumping and screaming and shouting. You still going home living in a hell hole. Still fornicating. Still lying. Still cussing. Still cheating. God will change you. If you want to be changed. Because see here, here, here. We contend for the doctrine of Christ without. Without hesitant. We, we ought to contend for this gospel. We, we, we got to contend. We got to keep, keep pushing this gospel. Because see in 2 John verse 9. It says whosoever transgresseth And abide not. In the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abide in the doctrine of Christ, and have not both the Father and the Son. Abide in, what do you mean abide in? Stay in it. Be in it. Get in it. Somebody say, get in it. Abide in it. Get in it. Stay in the gospel. Because the gospel is the only thing that will save. 
only thing that will save you. It's a sad time, y'all. They, they don't. But you know, the sad thing is, is they think they're saved and they're not. Wake up, people. It's right here in the book. God said, when you're saved, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Your thought, attitude, everything changes in you. We've been sold this thing called God is still working on me. God don't do work like that. When he do it, he complete it before he started. Oh, God is still working on me. He ain't started working on you then. Because God changes you instantly. Behold all things. What does behold mean? Right now. Behold right now. All things are new. God didn't change your heart. He didn't change your mind. He didn't change the way you see. Why do we put on glasses to see clearer? That's how your heart is when God saved you. You see clearer. You feel clearer. All that stuff is out of you. The hate that you had for your neighbor is gone. You can hug the person you said you would never speak to again. You can love those that lie and cheat you. You can do right when you want to do. Mm -mm. If you want to do wrong. So do you desire to have rest for your soul? Do you? Because if you did, you'll be fellowshipping with your brothers and your sisters. Do you desire freedom from sin and freedom from guilt? If you do, you'll find rest in the old path. You'll find only in him who lived and died for our sins nearly over 2,000 years ago. If you are stumbling around in your life, then ask God for the old path. He will lead you back to God. He will lead you back to God. Call on Jesus. He will lead you back to God. Amen. Amen. The old path. Hey, this is Pastor Anthony with Faithful Praise Outreach. I am delighted in the Lord that you took time to watch our live stream. We would like to thank you for giving a moment to pay attention to what's going on here at Faithful Praise Outreach. And we would like to cordially invite you to any of our services. We have current services at this time from 9.30 to 10.30 on Saturday mornings, which is our Christian education, our morning worship from 11 to 1.00 p.m. which is our Saturday worship service and Thursday nights from 6 30 to 7 30 which is our Christian education you are more than welcome to stop by you can also reach us at info at faithfulpraisechurch.org for your prayer request or any other request that we can help you with we'll be delighted in the Lord to stay in prayer with you and your family if you also like to donate to this ministry you can donate by texting the word give to 916-831-7366 god bless you and be blessed this is overseer anthony with faithful